Next, Mulligan. Okay, here we are. One more run. Maybe the last one? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting tired. I'm starting to get a bit silly, a bit not. Man, I'm, I'm losing my commentary, too. I might have had too much beer, or maybe not enough. I'll... There. First pause of the game, or of the runs. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I suppose it would have been clever. Not really clever, just sort of... Not really intelligent, just sort of not idiotic if I would have taken that swig, like, between play sessions. So that you guys wouldn't have to hear it, but oh well. Like I said, I'm so zoned in on Mario now that... Okay, maybe I'm thinking about this too hard now. Okay, um... Oh, I gotta get, it's because I'm losing my commentary. I'm losing my commentary. I, I knew it was the commentary. I'm running out of my commentary, and I'm starting to pay attention to what I'm doing. And that's bad in Mario for some reason. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I was talking about, like, level gimmicks, and it's, like, it's, like, kind of irreconcilable differences. And I guess I'm just gonna, con like, continue on from, like, the previous play sessions, like, commentary train of thought without even acknowledging that there was, like, a break in the video. That's just what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> so I was talking about level gimmicks and, like, how some people like them, some people don't, and it's kind of, like, an irreconcilable difference. It's, like, people... Like, I was talking about how, like, yeah, the lack of distinctness between level between the levels in this game like the lack of like level specific features and obstacles uh, to sort of give each level its own character uh, is really kind of a strike against this game for me because I prefer games that have like a lot of level gimmicks like like Mario Brothers 3 it, it definitely takes the approach where it's like yeah new stuff in every world sometimes like uh, unique elements in like a single level that won't appear anywhere else in the rest of the game and it's like every level it's like I'm, I'm not like some of the people it's like i couldn't say like yeah six like what six four or whatever is the level it's like oh yeah six four was a good one like i don't know the numbers of the levels but i can say like yeah the level where this happens the level with this kind of layout that stupid level with where it's like based on like you gotta hit a p switch and run through like a infinite loop to get a leaf and then f hit the p switch to make the coins and fly using the leaf you got from the infinite loop that stupid fortress i forget what world it's in but it's like the levels are distinct where it's like if you were to ask me to like i identify like a distinguishing feature of like a Mario level it's like what's my favorite Mario level in the original Mario Brothers it's like I, I couldn't tell you it's like the one and I, I guess they've got like classes of that's not entirely fair it's, it's just that just got, that they're kind of divided into classes of levels it's like you've got like these kind of platform levels they have their own unique graphics set you've got kind of like the regular ground levels kind of have their own unique graphics set with different backgrounds occasionally and then you got the swing levels, and the underground levels, kind of, like, they kind of feel a little bit different, I guess? I, I guess, yeah, the sort of, sort of the lot, like, the, the ones were, like, the previous one level, where you've got, like, the bunch of platforms suspended. It's like the, the kind of the platforms suspended over a bottomless pit level versus the ground levels. You've got kind of two different level paradigms. It's just, the thing is, it's like a, it's a common paradigm. It's like, it's not a gimmick. It's just, like, a type of level that recurs throughout the game. And again, some people say that's good game design. It's like if you you got like this sort of style of level, you should do that again and do it in increasingly difficult configurations and that's good game design. But it's like, not for me. And it's like, and yeah, but it's like so someone who, it's like you can't design a game to appeal to both of our sensibilities. Like someone who likes that who, who likes games like that, who thinks that like that is good game design is not gonna like the games that I like with like a lot of level specific gimmicks uh, that's like just constantly changing things up and uh, has like really really distinct levels with completely unique features and like a game that really appeals to me that has like all that stuff I just said I like is not going to appeal to someone who uh, likes that other kind of uh, approach to level design that I was talking about so it's just like there's no winning and it's just you, you gotta pick your target art audience is the thing. So it's like, it like I'm, like yeah, I'm, and again back to that Sonic thread. It's just just baffles me that people, that I don't know what it is. It's just the the way that people are so quick to kind of throw. And I, I'm guilty of this occasionally. I kind of throw it out there sometimes when I'm talking about 
like, this is bad game design when I'm really talking about something that I think is something I like in games. And usually when I throw that out there, I think it's something that's like such a... I don't know what to, what to call it. Something... Okay, let's just throw away all pretense of like not being like a condescending prick. When it, when it, when it comes to things that I think are like so fundamentally obviously good in games that I like... That I, that I kind of have the attitude that it's like, well, people should want this feature in games, and if they don't, then they're stupid and we shouldn't consider them as a game, as an audience for games. And it's like, it's kind of an attitude I've been trying to... Like, it's it's not like a rational position that I've, like, thought out. It's like, oh, people who like this don't deserve video games. It's just kind of like a hindbrain, like a, a prejudice, really. It's like I get that feeling about... Or, uh, like, like I was... Or, uh, this is crossover to the Azure Dreams video I just recorded. I can't really reference that since there's probably not a lot of crossover audience between, <laughs> yeah, that kind of video and this kind of video. Or it's like, oh, what's a good example? In fact, I remember I got called out for this, uh, once. Where there's a kind of a paradigm in game design. Not really a paradigm, just kind of a property that emerges from some systems, especially in RPGs. It's kind of the the win more syndrome, where it's like uh, the better you do at the game, the more the game rewards you with like power ups and new abilities and things that basically the game becomes easier the better you do. Not like based on your skill level, not based on the fact that like you're good at the game and so the game's easier, but like the game like games that throw out like goodies at you based on your performance like uh, I think I think yeah it was uh it was Metal Gear Rising that I got called out on it's the kind of game where it's like uh, in that and I think uh I think the Devil May Cry games work like this too where it's like or it, it definitely works this way in Metal Gear Rising where it's like it, the combats there's like each it, after each sort of combat scene you get a ranking based on how good you how good the game thinks you did like how quickly you did it how little damage you took all that kind of stuff you do, you get a ranking based on how good you are at at each how good you did in each sort of combat scene and uh, those points like your ranking translates into points and those points translate into upgrades it's like you get like new useful abilities that help you like do like open up whole new boss strategies that you can't do without them. Like you get your like your your dust your side dodge that makes the game way easier, and also just like straight up like more your more health upgrade, your more damage upgrade, and it's like you get more points to spend on those things the better you do at the game. So it's like the game. Like, I guess, suppose one way to look at it is, like, the, the game rewards you for doing well with, like, you know, goodies. And it's like, the, the better you do, the easier it becomes. And it's like, um, another way of looking at it, though, is kind of the game punishes you for doing poorly. It's like, the, the more poorly you do, the worse your rank, the less health you'll have, the less damage you'll be doing, and you'll be missing out on, like, some good and useful abilities that would kind of help you to help to mitigate things. And I, personally, I, I, w I went, I go so far as to say, like, that's almost, I kind of think, bad design. It's like, uh, I, I, I don't know. And then you could argue, but the opposite, and then I, I can also see the counter argument where it's like the op you could argue the opposite is also bad design. It's like what give the player more health for failing. You want to reward the player for doing poorly. In that case, like the best way to get through your game then is to suck at it to the point where it becomes like super easy. And that's uh, that's actually there are games that actually work like that. It's like uh, um, I'm kind of blanking now. Or, or, or actually, yeah, that's actually it, uh, that's a that's a feature of like uh, actual like arcade games, especially shoot 'em ups. You've got the ranking system where it's like the better you do at the game, it's like if you go for a super long time, kill a lot, have a high score, kill a lot of enemies, go a long time without dying, the game will like silently increase the difficulty. They call it the ranks, like they call it rank. It's the rank system, and it's used in a ton of uh, shoot 'em ups where. Uh, uh, yeah, shoot 'em ups where uh, 
yeah, especially the old arcade shmups where it's just like, yeah, the, the and then once you die, it's like, yeah, the, the your rank decreases, and it's like the, yeah, the enemies get slow, it's, yeah, the way it changes the difficulty, it's like it makes, it does stuff like, you get like, the more, the higher your rank, it's like, the more bullets, the faster bullets move, sometimes you get more enemies that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, and it's like that kind of thing, and so it's like, yeah, the game kind of punishes you for doing well in that, at that point, to the point where, actually, if you watch like 1cc, like super plays of some of like the most difficult shmups up there, out there, you will see players like actually do that. They will take deliberate, like super plays, like the best players in the world at these super difficult games will deliberately die in order to decrease their rank. They'll And like, you'll see that in like some playthroughs. They'll say like, and it's just like a common thing. It's like, yeah, rank management is a big thing in this game. And it's like, and what they mean by that is that you have to die every so often in specific in specific places in order to prevent the game from being so difficult because it's like and it's like yeah and you need to do it in kind of like a specific place so that your rank so that to avoid being like maximum rank at a particularly difficult boss and it's like and i don't know that also strikes me again as just kind of i would i would i would be so bold as to say in fact that that's yeah kind of bad game design <laughs> And it's like, so then, so it's like, what, rewarding them for doing well is bad game design? Rewarding them for failure is bad game design? It's like, there's just no pleasing me, I guess. And I guess that's kind of the thing, is kind of my favorite games is, are, uh, well, not really my favorite games, just the, the, what, the fairest way, I think, is just have the games, like, just make the same game for everyone. Or not for everyone, but like, you know, uh... Like, let the player choose at the outset how difficult they want the game to be. Like, if I think the game is too difficult, let me make it... Let me... Let me decide for myself that, okay, this is too hard. I want sort of more... Or, you know, or just the easiest way to do it. Just, like, you know, have a difficulty setting right at the start of the game. And it's like, if I, if I want to... Or, and let you change and make it adjustable, kind of like in the middle of the game. That's, like, a great feature. It's just... In fact, I do that all the time. I love that in games where it happens. It's, like, great. Because in... Ge ah. I'm just... I'm going too far into commentary territory now where I'm, like, literally not even paying attention to what's going on on screen. Like, not in the slightest. <laughs> um... Oh come on! That was another. That was a physics, not a pain, not a lack of attention thing there, but where like I expected Mario to do some, to to like fall off that platform just a little further there. Oh god! Yeah, I really really shouldn't even be slowing down going for the mushrooms here. It's like, oh my god! Fuck! There it happened again, where it's like, yeah, I didn't quite get the full running speed, so I didn't quite get the distance I got. It's like, yeah, once I... Okay, I need to get start commentating again so I can get my... So I can get just the right amount of lack of focus to get doing decently at this again. Um, what was I talking about? Whereas, yeah, I, where it's like, uh, not necessarily... Where, or even not necessarily where you have to, like, uh, have variable difficulty at all, like, make the same game for everyone, that's fair, it just, it just seems weird to me that you'd, like, adjust the difficulty automatically based on, like, how the player is doing, it's like, maybe the player, like, maybe if you, like, maybe your auto, difficulty auto adjust says, like, oh, this player sucks, we'd better make it easy for him, maybe the player likes failing a bunch of times, and, like, doesn't want the game to be made easier, in fact, I remember that, it's like, uh, I can't remember, I think it was in, uh, what game was it? Or I, I, it's not an uncommon thing that happens though, where I'll like start a game on the hardest difficulty setting and I'll die like maybe four or five times in a single section and the game will be like, you look like you're having trouble, wanna kick it down to easy? And it's like, no dude, I've like not even begun to like learn how this game works yet. It's like, I don't get frust- like especially when I'm like first learning a game, it's like I'm, I don't get too frustrated if I like die like five times in like an opening level. It's like I'm still learning the ropes. And it's like beyond a certain point, I, I think it was Infamous, actually. I started Infamous on, like, the hardest difficulty setting, and it's, like, within, like, I think, like, the first, like, major, like, really big encounter, like, pat really, really super big battle scene, where it's, like, I died, like, six or seven times, and the game's, like, oh, it looks like you're having difficulty. Want to bump it down to easy? That was bullshit right there. Seriously, he failed three times to get into little freaking cranny there. That was... I don't know. I feel, like... I feel like I'm, I can rightfully blame the game there, even though I probably sh Again, I, I just let go of the button. I just let go of the button a bit too late, and then he collided with the top bricks, and then there's just no saving yourself at that point. 
Um, anyways, yeah, gotta get the commentary. I, I should, like, not even try progressing until I've, like, got sort of grounded my commentary and got something to talk about before. Just, just like, pause the game until I <laughs> decide what I'm gonna go on. But it's like, yeah, it's like, real, and, and like, what what if, like, they, like, they took, what if instead of, like, doing the, hey, do you want to change things? Like, that's a good approach, I think. It's like, ask, like, just, you know, let the player adjust their difficulty, like I was saying. I think that's a good approach to things, but it's like, what if they, instead they had decided, you know what, we'll have, like, adjustable difficulty, we'll, like, we'll secretly adjust the difficulty based on what we think, how we think the player is doing. It's like, maybe the player, like, doesn't get that easily frustrated. Like, what if, like, I was, I was not having a pro, like, ah, oh, God. That I, f yeah, and again, I feel like I, that shouldn't have been as difficult as I, it was. It's like, yeah, I just, I just want to jump a little bit faster. It's like, sure, I hit the jump like a little bit early. It's just, just let me accelerate in midair. Like, what, what's the harm? Oh well. Um, and anyways, wow, barely made that. Um, oh no, this is getting. I can feel it happening. I'm like getting like flustered and like. Losing my cool and like losing my mar I'm losing my Mario sense that that I'm like somehow de like I I somehow developed over like the first like the first two playthroughs the first two attempts and now I'm just like slowly losing it I guess maybe that means it's maybe time to take a break I've no I know that or maybe you know take off for the day I know that's actually happened with me for some games especially like high score games where it's like I'll stop playing a game and like like I'll focus really intently on like trying to get like a high score or a 1cc in a game and it's like I'll just like hit a wall or get frustrated or I'll start like regressing is the worst thing it's like I'll actually start doing worse and I'm like making no progress and then oh, I should want to go back there actually yeah I keep forgetting the way these stupid maze things work um so yeah, th this one is easy at least, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's like I start regressing and then it's like, okay, whatever, let's stop this for a while. And then I'll take like a big long break, maybe days, maybe weeks, and then I'll come back to it. And it's like, okay, I'm coming back to this game for the first time in a long while. First, first attempt in a very long time at this 1cc or this high score. Let's get warmed up. And then like my warm up run after like my two or like my multiple multi day or multi week or even multi month break. And I like I'll get like a new record or like a new personal best on like my first try. I did that. I remember that happened with like my biggest. Uh, it was a Tetris attack. I was for a long time. I was going for the uh, time attack or not time attack. What do they call it? The the mode where you try to get the highest score you can in two minutes. I like, I, I think they did call it time attack, even though your uh, score attack, I guess it would have been. Yeah, it's a score attack mode. Where And I, I remember trying like over and over again uh, for like a good solid like week or so. I was like really intensely into score attack, trying to bump up that high score. And I was just, I got like, I sort of reached a peak. And then beyond that, I was like, I was just not able to get back up to that high score again. I just... Try and yeah, it was like a week of failure where it's just I fail to make to beat that high score and it's like making no progress and it just sucked. So it's like, okay, whatever, I guess we're done with this for now. And then I like I stopped playing the game for like a good like close to a month, maybe even more. And then it's like, oh yeah, and then I just I think I, or I think I took a break to play like a different game or something. And then it's like, I think maybe an RPG. In fact, yeah, I think that was when I got into uh. It was around the time, I think, when I got into FF6, actually, was around the same time. What? Okay, I guess Mario just moved a bit more slowly than I thought. <sighs> now I'm getting into that, like, one more run territory where I'm like, I really want to get back to seven, at least, if I do this, but I know, like, I'm doing worse and worse. We'll do one more run. One more run.